All right, we're, bo- uh, we're back with more right here on the sports call. And before we do anything else, let's get right to the phones, Chris. We got a lot of calls. I'll try to squeeze them all in if we can. Uh, beginning with Jerry in Myrtle Beach. Jerry, what's up? Hey, this is Gary from Myrtle Beach. I'm retired from uh, Moreauville, PA, from Pittsburgh. I just want to tell you guys it's great to see you on TV. And uh, what do you think about the Stillers? I do have a Stiller mailbox down here, and everyone greets you down here. A lot of Stiller fans. Wow. Uh, well, if Ben Roethlisberger plays, which I expect him to play, I think it'll be a tough game, but I think they'll win the game. If he doesn't play, then I think we may see a different outcome there, just because I'm not sure. If I had my choice... Uh, and, and this is a good question. I'm sure, Chris, you debated this on the radio in the last couple of days with Pony. Uh, who, who should be the backup starter if, if Roethlisberger, for some reason, can't go? Uh, my pick would be Josh Dobbs. And it's not because I think Dobbs is some great passer. Obviously, he's not proven to be so far. But in this day and age, I want somebody that at least gives me some options. And I think Dobbs, with his mobility, which is still very much in evidence, at least gives you the opportunity to extend some plays, maybe make some easier throws because of his legs, and maybe just flat out make plays with his legs. I'm really down on Mason Rudolph, and I always have been, so I'm going to pick Josh Dobbs, but I don't think that's the way the Steelers would lean if it came to it. No, I think they'll go with Mason Rudolph, but I think it may be a shorter leash. I think they they got a good dose of him last year. I still don't know what to expect from Dobbs. We haven't seen him all that much in regular season action, but I do like the element that he possesses with his legs. All right, let's go out to Joe and Latrobe. What's up, Joe? Hi, um, do you think it was a mistake for the Steelers to get rid of L.J. Fort? And also, do you think, when it comes to the Steelers' um, 17-game schedule in 2021, who will be the natural opponent for the Steelers? Will it be the, will it be the uh, Lions, like the Pirates play the Tigers? I'll hang up. Thanks. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, you're looking way far ahead on that one, Joe. Um, I'm not sure. L.J. Fort, no. I mean, he made a choice no, to No, because L.J. Fort... He was last seen, what, letting uh, Eric Ebron run completely uncovered into the end zone in that Baltimore game, right? I mean, L.J. Fort out to lunch the last time I saw him. I'm pretty happy that he's not around anymore. There are a lot of L.J. Forts out there, and, you know, they they have pretty good talent on their team right now. You're always going to have guys come and go, and they got a tough offseason coming up with the guys who are going to want more money. And on that note, Chris, thanks very much. The Purple Jacks, when you're on next, you got to bring the green jacket. Do you have a green jacket? No, but I might be able to acquire one by Sunday night. I think I might be able to do that uh, if the uh, Lord is willing and the crick don't rise. (laughs) On that note, we'll say good night. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you guys again tomorrow after round one of the Masters and talk more football right here on the Sports Call. Good night.